Yeah. All right, yo. Episode 45, the Takeaway Podcast. We out here. Um, here with our, actually our first guest, and we're doing a year a year removed from it. Um, Xavier Tillman, welcome to the show. Appreciate you coming on. Yes, sir. Skis. Welcome back. Uh, I think you were on episode seven, if I remember right. So Yeah, I was, I was early in the it's, thing. I was, you were the first guest, man. You were the first guest. Yeah. the world. Um, you know what? I, I like to dabble a little of the podcast. I watch hella podcasts. Y'all started me off though, though so I love it. Hey, we, we yeah, take we credit for that. that. Yeah, we take credit. Um, starting at uh, let's just start at the home front. How has quarantine changed your life over the past few weeks? Um, very different because <laughs> yeah. I'm used to leaving the house every day, going to class and going to the gym, and now. And even traveling to play against other teams, but now literally staying in my home all day, maybe go for a walk here and there, is a, a lot different for sure. Yeah, what's it like being quarantined at home with two young kids and a damn near newborn? What's that like? Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I can see it in your eyes, so, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm playing, you know, monster hide and go seek with my three year old. <laughs> Um, and then I'm waking up in the middle of the night still with my newborn. So, you know, uh, get it how you live, baby. That's how it is. Man. Man. Get it how you live. Man. That's crazy. Man. <laughs> that's must be hard. Your family's beautiful, don't you? Yeah, appreciate you. That's the one, that's the one thing, like, above all else, I got a beautiful family. I got a beautiful wife. I got True. beautiful kids. Everybody healthy, too. So it's like, okay. I even know we in an apartment, and we need more space, but we can't get more space right now. Yeah, I got them. Everybody's good, so that's that's the best thing. That's the best way to look at it. So, how has between the second and the first kid, how has life changed since you added an, another one? Um, usually, like so, when I just had one, when I just had Yanni, it was like I could put her in front of the TV, and me and Tamia could go watch our shows, so that we could just do that and it'd be cool. But now it's like I put her in front of the TV. And we'll have the baby back here, and Yanni will hear us playing with the baby, and then she'll come back here like, "Yo, what y'all? Do? <laughs> I thought that was chilling. Y'all playing back here?" And we like, "No, no, no." And then now uh, we got uh, the whole gang. So that's funny. that's that's really what it is. Is is my three year old be like, "I thought y'all was relaxing. Y'all playing with the baby. I want to play." And yeah, yeah, that's the big difference. <laughs> she gotten jealous of the the newborn. Like, uh, she's been a good she's been a good help but occasionally you could tell like she like okay i want some attention too but yeah. she does a good job of like saying like excuse me can i can i say something or excuse me can i play with you guys something like that so she's uh been doing a good job surprisingly because at first everybody gave her so much attention so i was expecting mm-hmm. it to be harsh at first but she's been handling it pretty well though that's good that's good Man, you're young to be having two kids, man. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, no, Can't no, imagine I having two kids. I ain't having now. another one until, what? Uh, <laughs> my wife is 23. And yeah, when she finishes school. So maybe when she, maybe when I'm like 24, 25. Okay. Like you got yeah, some years. I'm going to air it out. I'm going to air it out for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> air it out. Let, let this go. Let this run for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i cannot imagine having let alone one kid right now i can't imagine that so props to you yeah. bro. <laughs> props to you. <laughs> yeah you, just, yeah. you know how it is you just gotta make sure if you got the right person with you like yeah. my wife was like my best friend for years before we got married so i was like okay like i can i could see myself even if like like we just best friends anyway so i could see myself like being with you my whole life anyway so with these kids now that we got them we get to hang out and try our best to raise some kids at the same time yeah yo that's real bro i really feel like in relationships like your partner should be your best friend like it, i'm it's not I'm, mm-hmm. yeah I, I believe in that now like at first i'm like oh yeah you can marry somebody you're into and you guys are no that's that person has to be your like best best friend like laugh joke cry with the whole thing mm-hmm. for sure because she's sure. not it's not worth it bro like <laughs> Think about no, being cute. because <laughs> at one point, at one point, you're gonna like fall out of that. You're gonna be like, man, like it was cool, but I'm I wanted to get on something else. But if it's your best friend, you never gonna be cool off your best friend because you always got stuff you want to tell them. You right. always got stuff you want to experience with them, stuff like that. So it's, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's real. 
So you said uh, you've been sneaking off and watching your TV shows when you can. What have you been watching lately? Uh, my sister put me on Black Lightning on Netflix. I never okay. knew about it. I don't think I've heard of that. Minute. I think it's I've been seen it. for a minute. I've seen it. It's it's okay. I watched that. Obviously, I watched Ozark. I finished that fast. Bro, I haven't started that. I haven't got what? to it yet. He's, bro, Sam, bro. Come on. <laughs> I know I'm slipping because everyone's talking about it, but Yo, there, there's an episode in Ozark where you just like uh, <laughs> the whole time, just like man, I'm feeling for you right now. Mm. You be like, uh, yeah, that third season was crazy. Yeah, so Ozark. Episode, what's another one? On my block, I, I like that show. I watched that one really fast. Have you seen Tiger King yet? We watched like three or. <laughs> three episodes or so it was like i just couldn't really dive in i'm like i hate i hate everything about this show <laughs> i can't like, really get into yeah, that it that show's funny Yo, they just dropped a new show called uh black af really on netflix yeah yeah it's the guy who made blackish okay Kimba, is it Kimba funny Bears. or what what are we talking about bro it's like uh like i feel like you if you're black like uh <laughs> it's funny in a sense of like you get it yeah. but it's not like it's not like Tyler Perry funny or like Kevin Hart or like uh uh, uh Dave Chappelle funny it's like yeah. ha that's hilarious because like, I know exactly how they feel right now <laughs> okay like okay, the first okay. scene not to do any spoilers the first scene like he has a nice car and like he's he's doing well he's like a producer right and so he's at the, the country club with his five bad bad kids they wild and you know what I'm saying and then like mm. Guy who seems also successful, but he's driving Prius. So there's like that weird, like, mm. oh, if he, if he doesn't have the nice car, then he's not doing well. But now if he has the nice car, he's doing too well. And this is like hilarious if you like understand that, like, oh yeah. damn, like you can't win. Yeah. You know I'm gonna check that, yeah, I'm gonna check that out. For sure. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. It's hilarious. Yeah. So those are my shows. I've been watching some movies too. I got Disney Plus, so I've been watching all the throwback classics. Yeah. Saying a lot, all that, all yeah. the classics. Yeah. Did you watch uh, Mandalorian? The no, Star my 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 Thomas Kithier is my boy. He uh he loved that show during the season. Watched it every time he was in a hotel room. Yeah, I never I never got into that. I'm not a Star Wars guy. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, yeah me and either, bro. That was my show. Really? I don't really, yeah. I don't really get it. Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. I mean, are you into like fantasy stuff like that in general? Kind of, I think it's too long for me, bro. Mm. Yeah, the movie is dummy long. What about like, three hours? I'm like, bro, come on now. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love like anime. Like, I love like Naruto, like Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that. Mm. I grew like, up on Dragon Ball Z. I haven't got into those yet. Everyone tells me I need to, though. You haven't got into yeah. Dragon Ball Z? I haven't. The only anime, I don't even know if it's considered anime, but I watched um, Avatar The Last Airbender on Nickelodeon. And that was like that was it for me. That's like cartoon. I don't think that's anime. That's just that doesn't cartoon. count, bro. So what did you yeah. so what did you do when you were like five? To, you didn't watch Dragon Ball Z. What were you watching? Like Nickelodeon and the bro. That was when Nickelodeon and like Disney were in their prime, yo. That's like Jimmy Neutron, Danny Phantom, okay. all that. No, no, no. But I was a part of that too. I, yeah, me I too. That was, that was after, yeah. bro. So maybe I just Dragon turned the TV off when Dragon Ball Z turned on. I don't you, know. You watch, yeah. you watch Transformers? No, nah, I don't do think so. Watch, do you watch Yu Gi Oh? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, because yeah. they want Yu Gi Oh! Transformers Dragon Ball Z every Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you doing the order. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why did you change the channel? Yeah, he just turned it off. Yeah, I guess I changed the channel. Or <laughs> yeah. What point did you change the channel, dude? I don't know. I they had Digimon. Y'all remember Digimon, bro? Oh, oh, yeah. Off brand Pokemon. I remember that. <laughs> I stayed on that TV, bro. My mom was like, boy, you better start watching TV. <laughs> Oh, we went to black. Hold up. We good? Yeah. Right, there we go. What All happened? Right. My um, Wi-Fi probably. Mm. You got that student <laughs> Wi-Fi. It's bad over here. Yeah. <laughs> My brother lived in that same place. It was rough. I remember when he was living there. It was rough. You can't get nothing for real. So what about y'all? School and stuff like that? Uh, Yeah. I mean, everything's just kind of transitioned. Like, uh, I guess, Vince, you should probably go first, talking about the restaurant and everything. Yeah. So I had to... Um... Right now we're on temporary close down for Irie. So that's been that's been interesting to be part of. Um, we'll see what we have to do next is like, I'm trying to do products next, 
but uh, the global supply chain right now is messed up. <laughs> so yeah. I spent all my morning trying to find bottles and stuff, and like, there's none. They're all out. Because like, yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. Because like, <laughs> yeah, like, wait a minute, there's no bottles. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, so this is like weird to like be part of. Um, but I think we'll find a way and just like uh, be creative. But yeah, it's been, and I actually though, like, if you asked me if something like this will happen, how I like do well in the house, I'll probably tell you I'll go crazy. Bro, I actually kind of like it. I kind of like quarantine. I kind of like being away from people in a sense. Like, I don't know like what it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, yo, I thought it was going to be hard for me. I kind of really do like it. No, so that's even a after real quarantine, thing. I might just be like, yo, it's like, I might just really be in the crib. Be a homebody like, now? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a real thing. Yeah. I'm there too. I'm like, I'm realizing how much of the stuff I used to do was actually just a distraction and not, I didn't actually enjoy it that much. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I gotta, Man, I'll tell you one thing about um, like falling in love in this quarantine. Like me, I play 2K. Like I could play 2K for hours, right? <laughs> play 2K, watch Netflix, make some food, whatever I got here. I clean up a little bit, do a little bit of homework. I could I could do this all day. And then and then I go I work out for like an hour or two. So literally like I'm I'm chilling, I'm cool. Um uh, and it's nice to get away. Ain't nobody asking me for no pictures or no autographs. Y'all gonna like, ask you about that. That might be good to get that break, right? Maybe that's why I like it so much. Like like for me, like my wife is like, Yeah, quarantine sucks. I'm ready to get out the house, I'm ready to go see some people, ready to go do some things. Me, I'm like, shoot. Oh. <laughs> I'm chilling. Kind of this is nice. <laughs> You're on my kid. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to see what y'all want. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's been, it's been, uh, yeah, I've, I've been getting a lot of sleep though lately, too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's been some, that's been something cool. Like, like, I know everyone sleeps, but I don't really sleep that much. And so, like, now I'm like, oh, you know, getting seven hours is probably like more mandatory than I thought it was. I thought people were capping. I thought people were just being lazy. <laughs> and so like, but like, nah, bro, you feel better. <laughs> For sure. Serious. I feel way better. <laughs> my, my sleep is actually going down since this quarantine because I don't have nothing to do in the morning. So like, I just stay up. Mm -hmm. But then I always get up around nine every time. But sometimes I might not go to sleep till like two because I'm just playing video games and doing all that. So. I feel you, though. I'm not going to bed at 11, bro. I'll tell you, I'll be up at 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, bro. Sleep <laughs> until 1. <laughs> no, I'll never sleep until 1. I'll be dead before I sleep until 1 o'clock. And that's not because of me. It's because of my family. Mm, yeah, uh -huh. the kids don't let you sleep up till 1. That's for sure. Because yeah. Yanni get up at like 7, 38, and she'll come in here when she wake up. She'll be like, Daddy. Getting up soon. Like, oh, I got like another hour. So Yo. she's like, she's like oh, okay. That's if I woke up to a slap, oh man, it'd be over. It'd be over. Yeah. But it, it ain't nothing crazy because she's she's gentle. She'll be like, "Yo, hey, wake up, like, get up." Yeah, that's cool. That's hilarious. So, I'm glad to hear that we're all doing well with quarantine. It's good. Facts. So I guess uh, jumping into this past year, man. Um, you had a great junior season. A lot of uh, you set some records, you got some awards, the team did well overall. So congrats to that. Um, Appreciate you. Looking back now that the season, unfortunately, is over, um, how would you kind of like review or summarize your season, if you could? We had a lot of life. Life hit our team pretty hard compared to like past years that I played basketball, mm -hmm. starting with Cash's brother passing away. Yeah, rest in peace. Then – or even before that was Josh getting the news that he wasn't going to be able to play his senior year. Then Cash around the pass the way. Then Kyle goes in and out with injury. And then Rocket gets injured for like a month or so. Mm -hmm. um, then, then we finally like caught our wind a little bit, like in the middle or so of the big 10 season and we're starting to uh, catch back up and win games. And, um, then I had my son, and then mm. we really caught fire after that. So he was my good luck time, I guess. We really caught fire after that. And then the season just, yeah, we're done. And we're, really, and we're like, 
huh? Like, yeah. we just won, like, six games in a row. Like, we're, we're on now. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's it, B. Good job, though. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, – like you, I mean, you kind of talked about it, like a lot of a lot of things kind of went wrong during the season. Mm-hmm. Um, when you got, I mean, you guys came in as preseason number one, and then you took some, you know, losses early on, and eventually like fell out of the rankings completely. Um, how did, like, was there anything mentality wise that just like flipped a switch? Like, did you guys just get tired of losing? Like, was there anything specific that you can speak to? Uh, well, the first thing was we didn't lose to any slouches. Like, we lost to Kentucky. We lost to Duke. We lost. To, the only one that was bad was Virginia Tech. And I, and I don't know how well they did in their conference. But they had – the person who played good for them is on draft board. So, mm-hmm. like, even then, it wasn't the end of the world. It's just – we just lost so early. But we had, like, the toughest schedule in the country. So, like, coming in, Coach told us, we're probably – like, like we're probably going to lose a lot of games to start off. And I'm like, what? Who just says that? No, we're not. And then we we're doing it, and I'm like, "Damn, <laughs> like <laughs> we can't catch a break right now." Yeah. Um, but now we we sort of figured out how to play with one another. We had a lot of young guys. Like only me and Cash were like the returning. Me, Cash, and Aaron were the only players that returned from the top seven players the year before. Wow. Because because Nick left, Quato left, Kenny left, and uh, Josh didn't play. Yeah, those are minutes wise, like four of your top guys. Right. Yeah. So yeah. everybody else is kind of like figuring out where they fit in throughout the season. And then we found it at the end of the season, started turning it up. Mm. Was there like one particular conversation or like one speech that you guys had that like kind of helped you guys get locked in or not really? Uh, no, not one. We had lots of speeches throughout the year. And different ones motivated me in different games. Like mm. in the, the the Illinois game at Illinois, when I had that dunk at the end of the game, I remember Coach had like a great speech uh, the day before the game. And that kind of got me like locked in for that game. Uh, but we had speeches like throughout the year. They kind of fired us up at different point, point in time, mm-hmm. for sure. Gotcha. Um, so I got like looking back at the year individually, I mean, you said the the Indiana dunk, which was definitely like a highlight. Um, do you have any personal performances that you feel like was your highlights of the year or like most uh, memorable maybe for you? For me, I think I'm going to remember the most would probably be the Illinois game winning dunk. Mm. And, uh, I don't know. And probably, uh, yeah, uh, and probably like winning defensive play of the year. But I, I would like uh, awards and stuff. Not awards, but like, like individual plays. I don't, I don't really. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any that really like just stick out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you kind of like alluded to it, but you won the the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year award. Okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah, was that was that something like you set for yourself going into the season, or did you just kind of fall into that? Definitely. Okay. Well, I I knew I wanted to be on the defensive team in the Big Ten. I didn't think about winning the award. I just thought like, yeah, like I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm trying to be on the. Oh, I always we always say like first team, like X is first team on defense, because I I prided myself in practice on like whoever's my matchup, whether it's a freshman or a sophomore or a senior, like I'm gonna lock you down. Mm-hmm. That's just what my mindset was. Um, so then in games, I had that same mentality. And then I started locking down, like, important people, like Luca Garza. Yeah, uh, like yeah we remember. Turu, like Caleb Wesson. Like, I started, like, locking dudes down who I shouldn't have been locking down. And then people are like, oh, no, 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 no. this dude can check. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that went a long way because after that, I started thinking, like, what do dudes think when I'm guarding them? And then I kind of watched how people, like, look at me as I'm walking down the court, and they're just looking at me like, uh, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got some weight right now. Like, I got to keep this going. <laughs> yeah. No, that's real. So, like, talk about that because, like, you know, when you're saying, yeah, when I heard you say I'm locking on important people, I bet, like, it's just as scary, like, someone has to, like, still perform knowing that, like, you're going to be guarding them. Like, that's, like, a lot of pressure, too. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at first, I didn't think nothing of it because I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm a regular dude like everybody else. Da, da, da. And then a lot of people tell me, no, no, no. When you get on the when you get on the court, people notice you on the court. Like that's just the way it is. You've built that up to where now you got status. Like Xavier Tillman, people know who you are, type vibe. So if they see you on the court and you guarding them, they're gonna be like, well, all right, well, passing the ball today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I I didn't realize that for a while, not till like towards the end of the season when people were like, no, 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 like. You're like probably up for Big Ten Player of the Year, and not Player of the Year, but Defensive Player of the Year, and uh, mm. national. I was like top ten nationally or something like that. So that, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm pretty good defensively. Yeah. So did that help you, like, feel in- intimidating when you stepped on the court? Like when people started saying that to you, did you start believing it? Yeah, for sure. Um, when people started saying it a little bit, and more importantly, like when I started making big plays against those people, like. I had this block against Luca Garza at the end of the mm-hmm. game. It was like the last minute. We're up six. <clears throat> we just scored. So now they're coming back for a quick bucket, and I blocked it. And, and then he traveled, and I started screaming. And I just started realizing, like, oh, like, man, I'm, I'm like that. Like, I can play yeah. some defense. <laughs> yeah. And, and he was uh, one of the national really, player of the years, too. Yeah, that really got my confidence on a whole nother level. And that really yeah. helped me a lot. Mm. That's powerful, man. So uh, taking the little spotlight off you a little bit, um, what member would you say of the team or maybe even the coaching staff really surprised you the most this season, if any? Um, two, well, one didn't surprise me was Gabe Brown. He didn't surprise me, but he popped off this year. And, but yeah. I, he worked so hard in the season that I knew that his shine was going to come. Um, but Malik Hall, he's a freshman. Mm-hmm. who played really well for us this year. He had a couple games where he basically won it for us. Uh, first one was at Seton Hall. He came in, and I don't even think he missed a shot. He was like six for yeah, six for 18 hard. points. Yeah. And then he did it again against Maryland. At Maryland, he was like five for five <laughs> with 16 <laughs> points. So it was like, yeah, he, he really popped off uh, at certain points in the season. So he really surprised me out of everybody for sure. Yeah. Did you know going into, like, through practices and things, did you know that he was a, a walking bucket like that? Or did that surprise you in those moments? Definitely surprised me in those moments. I knew he was good. He had a lot of moves, but he didn't really show it all because he didn't have his confidence yet. So mm-hmm. he didn't show all the moves that he could he could do. But uh, he definitely, like, working out with him and, and make like, just watching what, how he moves and stuff, I knew, like, he had a bag. I just knew he wasn't he, – he probably wasn't going to tap into it until – uh, his sophomore year because then he would have had a little bit of confidence with him but he did it a couple times uh, throughout the year in practice where I'm like okay like yeah. he 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 sees it in himself a little bit that he's ready to play at this level yeah um, one of the things I mean you kind of talked about it earlier was about Josh and how his injury uh, ultimately I mean he didn't even get to suit up once this season we kind of talked about it last year and how it's hard to, you know, watch your guy like go so hard in practice and then not even be able to show it off. Um, was it, would you say it was harder this year because there was so much hope that he was going to be able to return and then he was ultimately never able to? Yeah. <clears throat> I think the hardest part this year was the fact that he was still lifting every day. So it would have been easy for me if he would have, if he would have just quit and been like, Hey y'all, like, I'm not playing this year. I'm just going to go to school and handle my business. Like, I love y'all, but I'm not going to be around the team because it's too hard. I would have understood that. Mm -hmm. But this dude was literally at every practice, at every walkthrough, at every game. He was lifting before every game. He was lifting every practice. I'm like, Mm -hmm. no, no, no. He's trying to get back still. Like, even even though the likelihood of not playing this senior year, he's still trying to get back. He's still fighting. He's still grinding. So with that, I was just like, man, this is so tough. Like, yeah. he wanted so bad. So yeah, man, that's got to be so hard. You got to watch and see. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't kiss the floor this year, <laughs> leaving his next year open. So there's a chance I, he yeah. can come back. I didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah. I've been texting him. There's a chance that he can come back, and that would be huge for him just to just to get it last opportunity to go out the way he wants to go out. Mm-hmm. He'd have a big opportunity too with Cash is gone. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> a huge opportunity to, to like officially be the man. Like no but this is your team. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So for sure. Yeah. Um 
one thing I did want to ask you about is, you know, love, we talked about how you guys really got hot towards the end of the season, ultimately won the Big Ten regular season title. Um, kind of, I want to get into your mind a little bit. Like, what is it like when you get that hot and you're so confident and then you get the call that March Madness is over and the Big Ten tournament is over? Like, I, I want to know, like, what was your initial reaction? What was the team's reaction? Like, how did that feel? <clears throat> So do you remember when LeBron did that interview and he said, like, oh, yeah, like, I'm not playing in front of any – like, if there's no fans, man, I'm not playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he said that. So I started thinking, like, well, that's crazy. Like, we're – we got to have fans, right? So they tell us the Big Ten tournament, we're not going to have any fans, but we're still going to play. So I'm like, that's weird. okay. But, you know, I'm with it. Like, I still play. Mm-hmm. And they say, you know what, we're just going to cancel the Big Ten. And I'm like – okay yeah. like in my head i'm like okay like <laughs> come on like if you're gonna cancel it like what like what's going on and i think it was that same day a couple hours later or was it the next day uh that they canceled the NCAA? i think it was a couple hours later like i think i went home and took a nap or something like that mm-hmm. and i literally like woke up to the text like yeah um ncaa has officially canceled the season or something like that man i was like what yeah. Well, you can't just can't like I was like in my head I'm thinking like you can't just cancel the season, <laughs> but yeah I guess they just canceled it. But I mean it, it makes sense with all the people losing their lives and stuff like that. Like, it like when you put it in that perspective and you see um, all these people passing away, you're like okay like I get it. Like we need to separate. We need to you know perform social yeah. distancing and handle all that stuff. But it, at the moment at the time I was heartbroken. I was like yo this is crazy. Mm-hmm. How are you just going to cancel, like, our season? This is Cash and Ernie and, and kind of George's last year. Yeah. Like, you can't just, like, you can't just can't. Like, you're not even giving them a chance to, like, finish out how they want to finish out. But yeah. it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I think, you know, I think we can all admit it was, like, ultimately the right decision. But it doesn't make it the, the like, happiest decision, right? Like, we all That's wanted to see sure. March Madness, you know. Yeah, I sure. want to see y'all ball out, man. Y'all, yeah. y'all coming together. You're having an amazing season. You know, I want to see you just crush and dominate everybody. And, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, man, this COVID-19 thing, bro. I'm like, yo, this shit kind of serious. And it's, like, it's over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Luckily, you caught some fire early enough. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you've been killing it since you've been playing. But really this year, I think that's uh, great to watch. And I think all your team did and all the guys. And like you said earlier, all the hardship you guys been through, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you don't expect that from anybody as people first. Like, like you said before, like you're more than a basketball player, you know what I'm saying? So to go through hardships like that as a team and Josh and everybody, and then Cash is here, and then you have to catch fire still, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Then yeah. like, like the whole storyline, I was like, I'm into it. Was, it. it was perfect. Yeah. It was perfect. But it comes back with a vengeance, yo. Yes, and for the NCAA tournament, it was like, oh, man. They've yeah. been through hell, and now they're about to get a chance to really, like, man. The 30 for 30 would have been crazy. What? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, and then there was even grumblings that, like, some of the players might get their el- eligibility back, which I, I was excited about, but ultimately they decided not to. Yeah, I, I don't know. That would have been weird, I felt like, because now you got fifth-year guys – yeah. Mix, mixing it with freshmen and who knows like a team like like Duke with a lot of with a lot of young guys like like you got a lot a lot of recruits coming in right or something like that like how do you have more scholarships and stuff so I didn't know how all that was going to work out yeah I didn't think it was a possibility because they played the whole season essentially like you can't just give them the eligibility back <laughs> right. um so one of the things that happened after the tournament was you announced that you were going to look into the NBA draft and keep your eligibility, right? Mm-hmm. Right now, I, I still got my eligibility. Yeah. Testing the waters here and back from a lot of NBA teams so I can figure out, like, where they see that I'll be drafted at. So that will be yeah. good once I really buckle down on that and, and get a good idea of where I'll be drafted at. That way I can officially leave, or if they tell me it's not looking good to get drafted, then I can make Will come back. Yeah. So was that a decision that you made prior to March Madness being canceled? Like, were you going to wait for the whole tournament to do its thing? Or did you know that kind of going um, into this whole situation? Uh, it, 
I I probably started seeing myself on draft boards and stuff like that. So I kind of knew, okay, I got a shot. Like people are saying, like, no, no, Xavier Tillman will probably go to this team with this pick. So I'm like, okay, well, that makes if, – if they say that, then it would make sense for me to at least test to see what people are talking about if, if people are talking about me like that. So right. um, once I did see that, I kind of knew what I was going to do as far as testing. Not necessarily declaring them leaving, but as far as testing, once I saw it, I knew I was probably going to test. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. What's so- that feeling like, though, real quick? <laughs> Like, well, the feeling of, all right, y'all might go to lead. <laughs> it is nerve-wracking. <laughs> like, it's a dream come true, of course, right, to play in the NBA. Like, every kid that loves basketball, like, always wants to dream to play in the NBA. But, like, mm-hmm. this process right here is so nerve-wracking because right now there's 30 teams that literally are going to tell me if they think that I can play in their league or not. And this is the league that I've always wanted to play in. So, right now I'm yeah. sitting here, like, I'm at home, like, so what do you think? <laughs> like, you like, like, you guys like me or what? Like, can I join? <laughs> so, I it's like know. texting it's... your middle school crush all over again, huh? What? What? <laughs> so you think I'm and, 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 and you and you don't want to and you don't want to tell them like, because I got options, I guess, because I can come back, I can right. come back to college, but at the same time, I really want to, like, you know, I want to play in the NBA. So, like, I'm I'm a mixed emotion about it. I gotta mm-hmm. play. I gotta play cool. I gotta play smart. Obviously, but at the same time, like, I still want to go to the NBA. That's my, been my dream my whole life. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's a naughty dream. <laughs> Literally a dream comes true right in front of you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So um, one, of the, one of the things I also wanted to talk to you about is uh, your relationship with Cassius. So obviously, you know, his college career, unfortunately, came to a pretty weird ending. Um, but what was it like playing with the three years with him? Like, what was it like having someone like that by your side? Granted, you had a, a full team, but having, like, a star like that on your side going to battle with you each night, like, what was that like for you? Um, well, my freshman year, just watching him and how he, <clears throat> how he handled himself, he was so confident in his abilities. He was, he was never, like, cocky, like, I'm about to just talk my, you know, talk my ish, whatever. Uh, but he was always confident. You could never try to knock him because if you try to knock him, then he would come back with something. So he was always confident. And on the court, you could just, you could tell the way he made his dribble moves, the way he made his passes, that he knew that he was confident. In his ability. Mm-hmm. So I saw that my freshman year, uh, his sophomore year, and he had a breakup game uh, in our fall in our Thanksgiving tournament. He had like thirty against UConn. I'm like, oh. Like, in my head, like I said, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, and then, like, he's going to be serious. And mind you, my freshman year, when he does this, I'm thinking to myself, oh, he's gone. He's going to leave. No, you don't just drop 30 in the college, like, whatever. And I, I figure out throughout my years that, like, it's a lot more than just scoring that's going to get you to the league. Mm-hmm. Unless you're, like, average of 30 a game. So, yeah. Um, just watching him throughout the years and how he handled himself uh definitely taught me as I got older like no you need to walk around with confidence that's the only way to be as good as you want to be is you have to believe you're that good or even better than what people think and for mm-hmm. sure that's what he did and that's what Cash showed me how to do for sure through my career at Michigan State yeah I think that's so true leading into like the Michael Jordan doc we all saw probably yesterday <laughs> I was about to ask you about that because it's just like I think confidence so having talent, being able to work hard, but the confidence is the cherry on top, is the difference maker. Like, mm-hmm. Michael's like, all right, like, I'm going to work hard, but, like, I actually believe I'm the greatest of all time. Not in a cocky way, not in, like, like, I don't have to do no work for it, but, like, in the sense of, like, that confidence, the way you walk. Like, the man was really balling out with a gold chain, and, like, when he made a move, his tongue stuck out. Like, think about yeah. that. Like, like, he's not – just hooping, just to hoop. He's hooping he's on a show. Dance all the time. He's putting on a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, that's a huge thing that a lot of people don't realize is the NBA. Everybody is literally like as like this close as far as like skill level wise, because everybody puts in so many hours and they don't have to go to school. So all of them, they just literally work out all day. That's what they do. So skill wise, everybody's like this close. Other than you know your bigs and your point guards, you got they got yeah. different skill levels. Yeah, but um, it's literally about your confidence. 
Because if you believe that you have all the skills and then some, you're going to show them. But the people who don't have that confidence, you might not show anything that you really have. Like your bag could be legit. Like you could be like Jordan, like in your workouts, making crazy pull-ups, da 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 handling the ball, shaking bake, flying to the rim. But if you walk on the court like, oh, I don't want to make a mistake, da 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 mm-hmm. nobody's ever going to know that you're that good. You might never know that you're that good. But for Jordan, you could just see he just wanted to win. That's and right. then when he realized that I'm also the best player, like on this court right now, I'm gonna have fun while I win. I might just do a couple mm-hmm. crazy dunks. I might just <laughs> jump over you and hit a crazy jumper. So yes, yeah. man, it was crazy watching that last night. It looked like he was playing on a little tight room. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny like looking. I mean, like we both said, like Jordan's such a good example of it. But like Kobe, um, LeBron, like any of the greats at most most of the time in any in industry, anything you do. They all have this, some people would say it's arrogance, but it's just this overwhelming confidence that like, no matter what's in front of me, whatever obstacle, whatever adversity I go through, I'm going to get to that line. I'm going to get to that goal or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, you can watch the the Jordan documentary for the entertainment that it is, or you can watch it as like, okay, this is watching someone who is literally the best at what they do and watching them do it. And you can kind of get an insight to what it takes to do those type of things, right? So that's one thing I've been trying to do is when I was watching it last night, I was watching it from like, okay, I, I am Michael Jordan. What's his mentality like? You know, how does he approach these different situations? So, I, I mean, it was overall just like really good, the first two episodes. So what did you pick up from it as far as like his mentality, like him walking, like chewing gum, like type, like what, what did you see from his mentality? One of, the, one of the biggest things, I mean, granted, it was just the first two episodes, so we only got to see like his first few years. One of the biggest things that stood out to me was he came into the league knowing he was going to be great, or at least uh, maybe not knowing, but believing he was going to be great. Right. And I think Mm -hmm. like where it takes most people, you know, two to three years or however long the time period is to warm up. Like he, he didn't need that. You know, like they said in the documentary, like his third game in and everyone knew who Michael Jordan was. And so that was like the biggest thing for me is like, man, this, this is a, he was probably 21. This is a 21 year old kid coming in and he was like, yo, this is mine now. Like you guys had your fun. It's my league now. And I think <laughs> like, yeah, just, just like, you know, I mean, you could probably speak to that Xavier about like what, what that means, but like, just, it's hard to grasp that confidence, you know, mm-hmm. like it's hard. Yeah, to I haven't, it. as far as coming in and, and, and taking something from somebody, I feel like I hadn't done that my freshman year in uh, high school mm. because, you know, you're coming in with the big dogs. Now you're with the high schools. You're not playing middle school ball anymore. You're with the juniors and seniors playing varsity. And I felt like my freshman year, like after a couple open gyms, I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Y'all can't mess. Y'all not doing these dunks that I'm doing. Y'all not handling the ball. Y'all not passing like I'm doing. Sure. Mm-hmm. you like, some guys could shoot cause I couldn't shoot a lick, but I wasn't worried about shooting cause I'm like, I can still check you. I won't let you get the shot off. Like I'm, I'm still good that way. So yeah. as far as like me, that was the only time I feel like, or at least the most recent time when I walked on the court with older people and I knew like, y'all not going, y'all can't mess with me. Mm-hmm. So that that mindset that he had in the league though, with with yeah. the best players to ever touch a basketball. You're talking about Magic Johnson, talking about Larry Bird, uh, Hakeem, da da da. Is 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 crazy. Yeah. It was it was uh, crazy to see and I understand like the storyline, the marketing, the branding, and everything also too, because like it seemed like the pace of the game was so slow. So when he brought when he played, he kind of like sped up the pace. And so for the whole mm-hmm. time he was playing, he gave you buckets. And like I think also that was like am- amazing to watch. Like he even talked about like you know people are wilding out, drinking, partying, smoking, and doing drugs, and so. You think about that, that was, you know, the time frame where he came in, 89, 90, that makes sense. Like, you know, if he just stayed clear of that, just off pure youthfulness and energy, he's going to be better than everybody. But to come out with that confidence and mm. be like, with the Nikes on and with like, yo, like, I'm the greatest of all time. It's my time to shine in the league. Yeah. And I'd be worried about fame. I'd be like, you know, and Kobe has a great, he did a thing on, I think, Valuetainment where he talked about this. He's like, it's not about you. I'm pretty sure he got that from Michael. Mm-hmm. Like when you decide to be one of the greats, you, you instantly forget about 
what people think about me, things I should be doing, mm -hmm. what, what I need to do, but my teammates like me. He's like, no, we're here to play ball. We're here to be the greatest. And we're here to dedicate everything to that. Right. Yeah. And then you start seeing it. And I feel like, you know, when like magic tells you you're dope, like you can't be like, I'm not the greatest. And Larry Bird is just like, bro, like you gave, bro, we saw the, he gave what, 60 some points? Yeah. 63. 40, like, 63. Like, I think he only had like four rebounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he and he was it. what, 21, 22? Like early in this year. I don't think that was his second year, I think they said. Yeah. He was 22 years old doing that. I mean, it kind of speaks to what you were saying about, like, your defensive and how you noticed how you intimidate guys. Like, that was him, except that's on every aspect of his game, you know. Mm -hmm. And necessarily, I, like, oh, people yeah. didn't know about it yet, but he knew it, you know. Like, whereas you found out through, like, people informing you and, like, through the season, it's like he knew that before he got to the league. It's just like, mm -hmm. man. Well, I think remember the same when he was talking. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, Vince. No, go ahead. You go. I, I was just saying, you remember in that documentary, he was talking to Roy Williams, and he was like, I'm about to be the best player to ever come through here. And Roy Williams was like, well, you're going to have to work harder than everybody else. And he said, like, he said something like, I'm willing to do that or something like that. But mm -hmm. like, not everybody's willing to work that hard. Yeah. Yeah. And like, to really sacrifice from the parties, from your friends. Um, family everything bro family family that's everything. the bit that's the biggest one is like you miss out on your family time i was talking to my sister about it a couple of days ago she was like like you missed out on a lot playing basketball and i said i know but like it's been literally been my dream mm -hmm. like i don't know what i would do if i didn't hoop. yeah you got to go for it and i feel like uh in quarantine too but like just in life i feel like that just reinforced that like when you have a chance an opportunity there's no question like if you really want to do it, throw everything in the throw everything in the pot. You know what I'm saying? Like you making some gumbo, like, yo, that goes in there too. Like you just gotta <laughs> like it and then you know, you keep making you know, you get a big enough for everyone to share out and eat off of. But it was like dope to watch and I finally like understood I'm a LeBron fan. And I think LeBron is the best player of all time. I think he's mm -hmm. great. I think he's on Mount Rushmore for sure. I now understand why people say Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. Like the number one. I get it. From those two episodes, I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> like, you see it. Like, it's the work ethic, it's the brand, it's the story, it's the confidence, it's the shoes, it's everything. It's, yeah. it's, it's everything. Like, remember that, that point where the daughter is talking, he's like, my mom asking, you want Christmas presents or we want to go to, <laughs> we pick the bulls. What? Yeah. The kids, the kids look like they was like six and seven. Yeah. I'm like, you want to go see an MJ game, you're six and seven, you don't want no <laughs> toys? No, I want like, to go see the bulls. The like, play. come on yeah. now, you know what I'm saying? Like, that—that's one, in, like, that's one in a million right there. Like, LeBron so, high, so like, you would, it's up sells, but they're not Jordans though. So you would like, separate like the difference between the greatest and then the best, right? Is that what you're saying? In a sense, because I think great means everything. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. outside, like Muhammad Ali is the greatest boxer of all time, but he's not the best record. Mm -hmm. Like Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer of all time. He has never lost. But the greatest boxer of all time is Muhammad Ali. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. he, he is he is the guy. Mike Tyson's on there. For so, so. There. Right. There's a lot of people on who's there. The best, who's the best NBA player of all time? I would Not have to the go. greatest. Who's the best? Okay, this is, like, this is hard. So I feel hot like take. Let's go. it's a really hot take. And, and, like, I'm not just saying this, but I think it's a tie. But in, my brain goes tie between Kobe and LeBron, right? Wow. And the reason why – and the reason why I'm saying this is that, like, I love LeBron because he works hard and he's also very talented. But there's something about Kobe coming into the league with that Michael story, not the tallest, not the fastest, not the biggest hands, and, mm -hmm. like, won at all costs. Like, and I feel like mm -hmm. win when it matters. And I have to, like, I love LeBron. I'm a LeBron stan. But, like, there's something goes to the point when it matters, you have to win. You know what I'm saying? And, like, Kobe, anytime it mattered, Kobe won. And any time it mattered, Michael Jordan won. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that whole thing was so crazy. Like you could just tell. It was like it was. When they started talking about just basketball or sports in general and how winning was just everything. You are like now how many points you score? <clears throat> now how many points you score? Now how well you do? But I'm going to do everything in my power to win this game, no matter what. Kobe did that. Mike did that. 
Yeah. LeBron, some like LeBron was sometimes like sometimes he was like, ah, oh, shoot, like he's a big free throw. Was, I don't know. And it's like, man, Kobe mm-hmm. went to line like we're down with two. I am going to make these free throws for us, yeah. so we can win this. Yeah, game. I mean, one of the things that stood out last night, and I think me and Vince were texting back and forth during it, was um, in that game two against Boston, he had to make that free throw to send it to overtime. He did. And although they kind of like they skimmed over that, like I wish they took more time to like set up that situation. Like, okay, you're 22, right? It's his second year in the league. You're going mm-hmm. against the best team in the NBA. Mm-hmm. It's the second game. You, I mean, I, I assumed he had probably 40 at the time, right? He's at the line in Boston. Everyone's tired. Screaming at him. Tired. He just, he just played 48 minutes. If he misses this free throw, the game is over. Right. And he pulls up and he just walks up. Splash. Bam, bam. All on that, too. Not, not, not no rattle, not no fluke. He splashed it. And then his emotions after, like, yes, we got another five minutes. Let's go. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah, like, they didn't turn around celebrating. It was just, it was like a fist bump. Like, all right, let's go. You know? Even the the 30 and 15 season, right? Whatever the, the record was. And only playing, a lot of play seven minutes with a broken foot, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, top of the commitment to win. Like, like a regular dude would just be like, okay, bro, just sit. Yeah, like I'm just not, dollar, I'm not yeah. gonna play seven minutes a game, or, or mm-hmm. it was seven or fourteen, something like that. But they're like, yeah, I'm not gonna play that little. Like, I want to hoop, or I'm not hooping at all. He was like, no, like, f this. I'm gonna play as much as I can. And, and even in that close minutes. game, remember well, that sorry. close game that they had, and he yeah. was like, they said he scored like eight and left. seven minutes or something like that, like. That's what I'm saying. Like, every seven minutes, he, like, made points. It wasn't like he was, like, dribbling. No. When his seven minutes, he was getting buckets. Yeah. Yeah. He gave them the best seven minutes that he could. And don't get me wrong. Like, but Brian that had to. Like, I would say, but that had to go with, um, like, that had to, like, help develop him in his, in his career of being such a lethal scorer. Because for seven minutes, there was nothing. Like, MJ, here. Like, just feed him <laughs> yeah. for seven minutes. He got yeah, seven yeah. minutes. Get him up. Like, yeah that had to help him in his career as far as like his mindset like okay every minute I'm out there I gotta be on kill mode mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. one of the things that um I wasn't the biggest fan of with the doc was kind of like how it was set up I wasn't the biggest fan of how it would jump from like decade and year to year mm-hmm. I, I really wish that it was in chronological order but that was like I don't know I and I, I do think the story was still cohesive despite that but I do wish that it was just kind of like you know, year by year, and we just kind of break down his career, you know. It would have helped because if, say, you turn on the channel later, something like that, you'd be like, okay, yeah. we're, we're, in, we're in Paris right now watching him play. Oh, wait, is it a child now? What happened? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? You, yeah, you it was all over the place, you know. Which, and I don't know, maybe they're going to do some. I mean, there's still eight more episodes, so. I wonder why. Maybe because there's so much, you know, because even you think about where they're jumping into, like, they're, they're still jumping into the, the beginning of his career. Yeah, like they're not like jumping into like, right? So it is weird. I agree with you guys. Like, I wonder, wonder when they're gonna go more family life. I wonder where they're gonna go to tell yeah. that story. Yeah, it was just weird because we went from that like that playoff game against Boston in the second year to talking about Scotty's contract. Yeah, you know, like it was weird to have those jumps. It's like Let's wait, talk, we about, that talk about how they got. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was waiting. Yeah. I was waiting for y'all Let's to get introduce it. that. I'm gonna, <laughs> let's get into Scotty. What do you guys think about that? So I'll set it up real quick, and then we can get to it. So. Uh, one of the things they probably spent 30 minutes last night talking about Scotty Pippen and his frustration and like setting up how he was the number two to the number one. Right. One of the things that they kind of glanced over was that um, one of the reasons why Scotty was so frustrated by the time that he had left was because he signed a seven year, $18 million contract. And he was the 123rd or something like that. Highest paid player in that. 122nd. 122nd. Low, I guess lowest paid player in the NBA. Six and, on the Bulls squad. Yeah, number six. With, with I mean, people who are not even fucking playing making more money. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't – man. I, I get – when he was breaking down, like, his reasons for signing it, I understood, right? Like, he uh, – I don't know. It said, like, he had nine siblings or something like that. Like, he had people – He just to, needed to get some money. Yeah, he had to provide. Yeah, he had people to provide for. And, like, I understand that. But – at the same time, man, like you're coming off a, a three P NBA championship. Like, come on, man, you can fight for more than that. I don't know. What? Yeah, I mean 
I, I, like at the, when you hear that, you think like, nah, somebody quit. Like it wasn't about your family at that point. Because if it was, you could have went somewhere and really got some money. Yeah, like Mike signed like the one year 30, 36 mil or something like that. So like, if it was really about your family, the money, you could have did that. You probably, in my opinion, it had to be for the championships. Like, okay, mm-hmm. let me play with Mike and try to win. Cause yeah. That's yeah. outrageous, in my opinion. Like, you're going to be the – literally, Scotty Pippen's up for, like, the best small forward to ever play basketball. Ever play basketball. Mm-hmm. And he was a – what did you say? 122nd lowest paid yeah. basketball player. In the league of the – yeah, come on. In the league of the time. That doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. It's actually, let's like imagine if like Shaq wasn't getting paid while he's playing on Kobe. Yeah, we I mean, can't even fathom it. Shaq you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, there was, was Kobe not getting paid. Go ahead. The Shaq was there first, so it's like saying like Kobe wasn't getting paid. It, it, and like Shaq, like it's just like it doesn't make any sense. It's like, bro, like right. pay them, man. But the funniest it, it, thing it, that it, I saw, they would leave. Go ahead, go ahead. The funniest thing I saw is like the owner of the team was like, I told him at the time that contract. I'm like, bro, what? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, why? If the owner's telling you not to do it, why are you doing it? The owner's hey. like, and I was like, don't talk to me about renegotiation. And I was like, that's hilarious, bro. Like, crazy. Uh, like everybody looking at Scotty, like, come on, bro. But at the same time, like, yeah, I get it. You're a six-time NBA champion, but we think about it in big, like, mm-hmm. like if you think about it in like the grand scheme of things. That's like how you're gonna make a lot of money for not just you but for your family. You yeah. got to get as much as you can get out of it. So, yeah, seven years, eighteen. What is that like? Like a little more than two million a year? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's like. And Mike was getting thirty six. Before yeah, taxes, before Mike was getting thirty six million. So Mans is making like one point two after taxes. Yeah. And uh, not, so that's probably. I, I wonder what the inflation rate is, but still, like. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously like what? it's a lot, <laughs> it's not of a lot of money, money right? Like, there's no, there's no doubt about it. There's a lot of money, but like, man. And, and you have to think about your brand as being the second best guy. So you don't get the shoe deal the same way. You don't get. Mm-hmm. So there's not really a lot of like back end benefits either. You get the championships. You get the wins. So like, I think Clay Thompson is a guy who plays it really smart. Like he's okay being like the second dude, not having the big shoe deals, but you gotta pay me, bro. Yeah, he still <laughs> you still get his twenty. You million, gotta pay. Right? You yeah, gotta yeah, pay me. With Clay. <laughs> what is Clay? What is Clay like, making? And I was talking about man, pimping walks so Clay could run. G, like <laughs> this is games that Curry and them not showing up, and Thompson going 40, 50 points. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, I mean, that's the that. thing, right? Like, there's a difference between taking a pay cut and getting finessed, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. What do you think he got finesse? Because they told him so. It couldn't have been a yeah, finesse. I, think, I, I mean, part of me just jumps to maybe he had a lot of debt, like at that moment that he signed the mm. contract, and so he needed the money fast. Because I mean, like you said, like he could have tested free agency and done his thing, and maybe I mean he could have at least got you know twenty five million or however. But obviously, right. that thing that that process takes a lot of time. So. To me, it's like, you know, maybe he had some car bills or something that he needed money for. I don't know. I mean, that's the only thing that my my head jumps to. Yeah, I think uh, he, he definitely opened the door for Clay right Thompson. There. Clay Thompson signed a five-year, $190 million deal. That's insane, bro. So, you look yeah, at, this, you look at the, as the number two. As the number two. If you look at, like, so this is, I think this is with inflation. So, or not, not with inflation. So, 90, 91, he got paid, Right. Uh, a seven hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. In ninety-two, two point seven. In ninety-three, three point four. Uh, uh, ninety-four, three million. Ninety-five, two million. Ninety-six, two million. Ninety-seven, two million. Ninety-eight, two million. So, guys, are you guys listening to this right now? Two million. That's a lot of money. But like, let me show you the jump. After ninety-eight to the Rockets, he's getting paid eleven million. This is like for. This is for each year. And this is the back end of his career, right? This is the back end yeah. of his career. That's then he gets thing. paid to the Trailblazers, fourteen million, right? <sighs> then he goes to the Trailblazers and get thirteen, and then another eighteen, and then his last year at uh, nineteen million, which in inflation time is like twenty eight million dollars a year now. Mm. And Chicago back to the Bulls <laughs> for 04 and 05 for four to five million. Man definitely got hurt really bad. Yeah. Like <laughs> really, really bad. He did like he did he grossed like a hundred million, but like he should have been up 
Man, so then like two, let's talk about it. Like, was it worth it? Was that pay cut for those seven years worth it? You tell me, you bro. Rings or, or money? What, what, what is happiness? Um, I mean, he got – it sounds to me like he got his money towards the end. So it ultimately worked yeah. out for him, right? But right. he definitely left – a hundred million on the table, at least, if not more. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I get it. Like money, like when you, when you have everything you want, like at a certain point, like what, like what's a huge difference between a hundred and 200 if you're not like really investing it or if you're not like, mm-hmm. like if you're just living your life, like if you're just living your life and you're buying things, whatever, like, I don't know. Like at a certain point you buy it, like you buy enough where you're like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm good. No, I don't have anything else to really need. Got the cars, got the house, got the beach house. (laughs) Kids got cars. So I just feel like when you're sacrificing your body and you're part of a legacy, there's Mm -hmm. like dollars part of it. If you're like hooping on a team that's probably not winning as much, then it's like, all right, like I can do what I love. I can make money while I'm doing it. And that's real. But Mm -hmm. compared, remember his last, so let's compare this. In 04 and 05, LeBron's playing. So when Scotty's going out, he's getting paid the same amount of money LeBron's getting paid his first two years. And LeBron's first year is four million. Wow. That's crazy. Four million, four million, five million. And then in 08, 13 million, 14, 15 million. Like a year, bro, this is guy's a season. This is a year, my G. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is a lot of money, bro. And then like by 2015, 20 million. By 2017, mm. 33 million. And by 2019, 35 million. Think about that, though. I was going to say, like, the Cavs really got off on LeBron for his rookie deal because he's way better than $4 million. But that's just what you had. Like, sorry, Brian, mm-hmm. like, you have to take this $4 million. Like, that's, that's as high as the league will allow you to get. Yeah. But, like, really, LeBron was probably worth $20 million his rookie year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure Zion is going through that right now. Right, like right. he 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 got his fat Jordan contract, but um, you know he's he's probably making you know five million a season, and just off you know ticket sales and merchandise alone, he's worth way more than that. Like not even based on what value he brings to the roster, you know. Hey, this is crazy. People want the jerseys and stuff, so yeah. Yeah, you know it's crazy though. Uh, Jordan also, well, Jordan is getting money off his shoes and stuff. He his salaries aren't that high either, bro. Cause like in ninety one he's getting paid two million. Ninety two he's getting really? paid two, three million. Hmm. Where was all the money going? Then? The Bulls got rich, bro. Her making twenty million. What was going on? Right. Yeah. yeah. Actually who's getting the money? Cares? Because ninety seven and ninety eight he got thirty million a season. Mm. Wait. So when did it jump? What was the year that like it, it was? The okay. So jump? after ninety six. So ninety six. Ninety five and ninety six he made three three point eight million dollars. Wow. In 96 and 97, he made $30 million. How do you jump? Wow, that's crazy. Well, 97 to 98, $33 million. Mm. 02, $1 million. 03, $1 million. Wait, so he played Wizards. for the Wizards for just a million dollars? A million dollars. Oh, that's love of the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all that is, is just wanting to play. That's love crazy. Love the game. I'm just trying to hoop. That's crazy. Wow. He was I started, figured he, he would have came to retirement he? for the money. That's wild. Well, that's crazy. But like, uh, his endorsement was protected probably stupid. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because Buddy's a billionaire. So <laughs> Yeah, he, there was money coming in at some level. He was doing it for sure. What other commercials did he have other than shoes? Was he Gatorade? Was he yeah, the he's Gatorade joints? I'm sure at the yeah, time he, he was, he was probably on uh, Wheaties at one point, I'm sure, because that was yeah, big back in the sure. day. For sure. Yeah. I'm Man, trying to be I, all on that. I'm trying to, like, hey. for my kids, I'm trying to be Gerber. <laughs> Gerber for the diapers. What else, what else I'm trying to do? I'm trying to do, like, big family cars, like Tahoe, Suburbans. I'm trying to, yeah. you know, I, could, I could promote those. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, nice beds. I like beds. <laughs> King size beds. I'm trying to promote all that. Yo, advertisers listening to this right now, like, yo, keep going. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What? I'm trying nah, to do that's, everything that's the, family-wise. Bro, when you go, bro, I think it'd be very smart to, like, get your family on that YouTube hustle. Be like, babe, I need mm. to make these YouTubes. We're a family brand. You know, when you're a family brand, that's Tide money. That's Apple sure. money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, because you're a family. You're not wilding. You're not saying you're going to be wilding out here. You know what I'm saying? So, but people want to know. People just want to know. Like, exactly. I remember when I was growing up, I wanted 
it was this like high school McDonald's of America. This one guy named Antonio Blakeney. He would drop these videos called like "Be Great," something like "Be Great" episode one. And it was literally the camera followed him around. He went to the gym, went to school, did his morning workouts, came to the game, did his after the game workouts. So you really saw this guy's life. You're like, man, he's putting in crazy work. Okay, okay, cool. So you kept, we kept waiting for the next episode to drop. Like, I want to see what else he's doing. So like, for me, obviously I'm not on that status yet, but I still feel like there's still kids, Michigan State fans or people from Grand Rapids who are kids. Like, we're like, no, like, what's Xavier doing? What's he up to? Like, da da da. Want to see the day to day. And for me, I don't be like, like I like looking at stuff on Instagram, but I'm not posting things like that. It's like, I just, that's not who I am. I don't just post a bunch of stuff. So, mm. like, I don't allow people to see inside my life, but it's not because I don't want to. It's just not what I do. I'd rather like a picture than post a picture. So, true. Yeah, it's that's, funny that you say yeah. that because, like, one of the biggest things that people said to me after you came on the show the first time was like how much they enjoyed getting to know you as like a per, on a personal level you know like when we talked about music that you listen to and stuff like that like that was what people were coming up to me and talking about so it's definitely true what you're saying because like a lot of people especially in sports like they seem larger than life you know and yeah I think for and, me, I, and i see that for sure yeah and i think for me like that's why um the, the shop the show that lebron does that's why i enjoy watching that so much Cause it's like, oh, he likes to chop it up and drink wine just as everyone else does. Like he's a normal dude, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so it's also props to that team, that undisputed team for like coming up with that idea. Cause that's really what it is, you know? Dude, having a, a clean family brand, like that's just like, you can put that into anything. <laughs> LeBron did that right. Michael Jordan, he was, he was dope, but like man was out here, bro. Like he's, <laughs> yeah. he's also having fun, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, the part of the LeBron. documentary where they're going to talk about, like, MJ going to the casino and all that before playoff yeah, games. That's what I'm really what? excited for. I'm excited. I was just laughing that he went golfing. He went golfing in between games. Yeah. I'm like, man, I feel like for me, I'm, I'm so – if it's playoffs, I'm so locked in that, like, I'm going to go – the next day, I'm going to go to the gym and do recovery and make, get some shots up. But, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to take care of my body that day. But I'm not going golfing and walking, like – I'm chilling with my family, like hella low key. I gotta rest. I gotta rest. Y'all know I got yeah. a game tomorrow. I gotta rest. No, I'm gonna go golfing with my that, opponent, Danny Ainge. Yeah, that was the craziest thing. Bro, this I, goes back to greatest of all time talk conversation. <laughs> like, think I, about it. Like the day before, you just lost some money off the golf game, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna show you tomorrow. And then goes like, that was the that was the day before that 63 game. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm bro. saying, like. He's going to leave the casino and go play. Yeah. But like, that's why I was like, you know what? We got to give him I – get, I get the title. LeBron works out. He's at home with his fam. He's, he's healthy, he, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Mike just did it. Somebody told me uh, – <laughs> not somebody told me. I, no, not that. I watch a lot of podcasts. I heard on a podcast <laughs> that uh, – who was being interviewed? It was, oh, it, was a, it was an all-star back in the time. So, maybe it was Allen Iverson, I think. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was an all-star game. He said he came into the locker room in the all-star game. And Michael was in the coach's office, door open, smoking a cigar with his feet up on the table. <laughs> like, I think it was, like, either at halftime or before the game started. And I'm just thinking, like, <laughs> do you know how, like, in your head you got to be to say, like, I can do whatever I want. Nobody can tell me nothing. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I'm revenues pretty... went up. They blew up because of Michael. Facts. Yeah, I mean, you see, like, some of the clips of, like, the competition he was playing against. And, mm, not looking too hot. Like, especially the clips of the North Carolina when he was in college. Facts. Yo, <laughs> those were <laughs> – he was playing against a lot of bums. Yeah. So, there's two ways yeah. to look at that. Are they really that good and he was that level ahead that makes him look like bums? Or was True. the competition so low that it was easy for him to take and shine? Mm. Yeah. That's what we don't know because we weren't playing. Right. Yeah. But like you can't that's not his fault. The competition's not his yeah, fault. Yeah, it's definitely not his unless, fault. Unless yeah, because at the too. time you go you go to what level you're at. So it's not his fault. Yeah. But you think about like the magics, the birds, like all the greatest people he played with in his era, then I think it makes more validity for the argument that like, okay, even if magic is a slouch, which we know he's not, Jordan was being on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like it don't even matter at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. It's actually crazy. That when was I a think walking triple double. Like, 
when you really think about it, you're like, bro, Michael was really, you know, out here. Yeah, as a 22, like we're only at age 22 on the documentary right now. And it's like, we've only, this is a dominating. Yeah. How do you, okay, let me ask you this. How do you come into the league? We talked about a little bit about having that mentality when you come in, but Mm -hmm. how do you come in averaging 28? I think he was like 28.4 or 20. Nine, 28 or 29 points a game. How do you how do you come in averaging that? Because like now you're flirting with the best players in the league. Mm-hmm. Like James Harden averaging 35, Brian averaging like 27. Like you're, I think Davis like 26. Like you're flirting with the if you're 28 points a game. Now you're like no, this dude's up for MVP. Mm-hmm. How are you up for MVP as a rookie? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I don't think we'll we'll never have that again. No, no, no. Yeah, Brian was close. He was like 21, seven and seven. But yeah. You no, I think – I yeah, I was going to say, I think it's just the confidence, right? Like, the, the the talent got him here, the work got him here, and then the confidence got him, you know, the confidence Not got him over the, the top. He's also, like, a psychopath a little bit. Because, <laughs> like, you remember when he talked about things? He was like, yeah, I was like, who's the leader of the team? All right, I'm going to take it from him. And then mm-hmm. he was talking about dominance over people. Y'all remember that? Yeah. He was like, mm-hmm. this is how you start dominance. This is how you take it away from people. And I'm like, all right, like, he's definitely – this like, this is – on purpose there's like some grace to it but it's also like on purpose like he told i'm gonna he know what he doing yeah, mm-hmm. he i'm gonna get 63 on you like you think what you think it's all hype you think i just kind of play golf or, or basketball for fun that's to, like the guy the coach said like he, he's the only player that could turn on and off and he never turned it off yeah that was when roy, roy williams was talking about i didn't even get that like what does that even mean Tell, like how do you, you try, like, i need you to turn that down <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I think how I look. I think how I looked at it was like your talent and your skill level. Like you know, you're gonna have a good game, right? You know what to do to like have a good game or start dominant. But and like never, like never turn it off. You know what I'm like saying? Like anytime, you touch, anytime you touch, anytime you touch the ball, like it wasn't like oh I'm gonna be I'm gonna mail it in today. Like every single game he showed up. Like the guy said, there's never a game where he scored 12 points. Like every game was like thirty game, thirty point game, twenty eight point game. Like he just never turned it off, and yeah. so like no matter who he's going against, and to me that I think that's like how I internalize that. That's crazy, bro. That's hard to do. Yeah, like, it's hard to have that motivation. You like because yeah. there's some college games that I even play where I'd be like, you know what, <sighs> I'm trying to get the win tonight, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> like I like like I'm not like I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to – like, especially when you know you're going to win. Don't, don't put that in your eyes, please. Especially <laughs> when you know you're going to win, you like, okay, well, I don't got to go off. I just I mm-hmm. just hoop. I just go with the flow, and when it happens, happens, because I know we're going to win. But, like, for Mike, it was like, no, I'm about to bust your ass. Yeah. That's, that's what's I'm about, about to make you look real bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You want to say Hi. <laughs> she didn't she want to last to. time. She didn't want to last time. Yeah, she wanted to come on last time. But that's I'm crazy. Not. I'll unlock your phone. I'll unlock the phone if you say hi. Okay, fine. Let me see. Oh, uh, <laughs> she got you. Thank. <laughs> Tough love. It's all right. She, she, was, got uh, heart, she got my heart wrapped on her finger. She knows yeah, that's what I said. She knows. She knows what she had to do. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, like any any closing thoughts on the doc? I think we. It sounds like we all enjoyed it a lot. You know. Yeah, no, I'm ready for Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I found my entertainment for the next few weeks. Yeah, I think for sure I'm, I'm going to be watching like old interviews and old games, like full games. Especially like Jordan's best and Scotty's best, because Scotty was nice. Like, like mm-hmm. I, I, I want to say like I guess, but like I never really watched Scotty highlights. You never, you know, you just look up Scotty Pippen. Like, you always look up Mike. So yeah, now I gotta yeah. like look in on Scotty and see like, okay, like what was he doing? Why was everybody saying he was this good? I figured that yeah. out. Scotty's a baller, bro. Yes, I mean, back. hey, Scotty's also a top twenty of all time. You know, I think we often forget about that, but you know, he's also up there. You know. yeah. So, uh, any closing thoughts on anything else before we uh, call the show? Anybody got anything? anything uh, well, for me and my family's sake, hopefully the next time we have a podcast, I'll be in a nice home. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah nice home. And 
that would be that. Life would be a little bit different for you. Yeah, Yo, life would be a little different. But yeah. if not, maybe next year I'll call you from the same place. But <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll see. We'll be ready either way. We'll be ready. Either way. Um, before we wrap, one thing you said last year I just wanted to check in on. You said uh, Future was your favorite rapper and favorite artist. Has anything changed on that front? Is he still your favorite? He That's your guy still? Slid, he 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 slid out and not because of anything he did is because that's just my flow right now. Who'd you find? So I don't really have like one I don't have one guy. Okay. Uh it's a weird mixture. Rod Wave, Trippy Hard. Red. Rod Wave. Hard. Rod Wave is different though. He's different right now. Yeah. Trippy Red is some I just like I like Trippy Red. Um who else is up there? Roddy Rich is like I did like Mm. Everybody knows machine. Roddy Rich now. Yeah, he's just dropping hits like that. The hit machine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Crazy. Special. Man. You know who's not bad, but he's not. I'm not playing him a bunch, but he's not bad at all. It's the baby. Mm. New yeah, project so. came out two days ago yeah. or whatever. Uh, yo, I'm we gonna start working we, out today. We have a weird feeling about Baby Bro right now. Went to went to his concert. So yeah, he did a concert, concert and he kind of turned was it? PR stunt. What do you mean? Like, because he just got off hitting that girl or whatever. And, like, he just turned – I feel like he turned the concert into a PR stunt. And so, like, we couldn't focus on the music. Like, every time – Every got time chance, he was talking about it? Yeah, every time he got mm-hmm. all – I need people I love my women love fans. Me. Yeah. So then they're just like, all right, like, we get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we get it. You're sorry. <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's West Michigan. Like, this is not L.A. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not saying we condone – people hitting people here, but, like, in West Michigan, bro, we care about other things here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone here is yeah. happy that a big artist came. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, we're just happy you're here. Like, like, like yeah, before. yeah, yeah. Before, I don't think he understood that. Like, he's like, yeah. use the, I'm like, bro, when you go to Chicago, New York, do that. Turn that to PR stuff. They're going to love you for it. Mm-hmm. Grab it, bro. We want you to go hard, bro. We don't <laughs> care about none of that. I went to a J. Cole concert uh, going into my sock. More year, yeah. Going into my, I think going into my sophomore year, I went to J. Cole concert in Detroit, and it was for uh, KOD. Mm. That dude went crazy, mm. and and he he played all like all his music. It wasn't like I'm talking like the sad songs, the songs to the girls, da da da. He played everything, and it was like yo, like he didn't just care about like. I'm just gonna play my hit so everybody like sings along with it. Cause they know I'm about to get into my bag and I'm about to do what I want to do. And he said, mm-hmm. I don't care if you can't sing, yell at the top of your lungs. And literally when he said that, I said, Oh god, this is great. <laughs> Here we go. So J. Cole is on oh my he's on my top five for sure. Oh yeah. Dang. Oh yeah. Yeah, you gotta say hi first and then I'll open it for you. Or say bye. They're all done. Can you say yeah, bye, please? Can. Say bye. Put to your face on the screen. Bye. Come on, get, they can't see you. Come up here. Come oh, on, you gonna get it? Yeah, she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Hey. So, it's just right there, a little closer. So you can see her right over there. There, bye. Bye. there you go. Bye. Wait, bye. say bye. bye. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I hope it's for you. Yo, uh, I guess before we wrap, um, if we don't talk to you before, you know, everything happens with the upcoming draft and all that. Good luck, man. Blessings to you and your family. You know, that's yeah. a crazy step that you're taking, and we obviously wish you the best. You know, appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you got all the support you. over here, you know. Appreciate you over here, G. Yeah. So, um, y'all stay safe. Make sure y'all send it to me so I can post it in my link. Look at how Ash I am. This is COVID-19. Oh, <laughs> hey, I saw it when you put Washing my hands. <laughs> washing my hands. This is washing my hands. Hey. I'm not even show my hands, bro. Same. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yo, appreciate you coming right, on again, man. Got you, my G. All right, y'all. All right, bye.